And we're back, Nocturnal Dark, with a brand new deck just for you and your sweet, sweet head. And today, we have Four Color Escape. Let's check it out. Alright, so this is a request by one of our viewers, Kate Shunji. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. I'm sorry. Um, but this one goes out to you. Thank you for the challenge. I really appreciated it. The idea of me sort of just coming up with decks off the top of my head is fun, but when I have a theme to stick to, it's even more enjoyable. So thank you again, and I hope you enjoy this deck. So getting into it, it is a four-color escape deck, which actually is pretty solid but it has one defining weakness which is um ashiok or even a elspeth nightmare or whatever anything that's going to exile our graveyard we pretty much just have to scoop you know because if we've got our, our graveyard full of escape creatures and then they exile it we're trying to win the game with half of our deck we're milling ourselves we're drawing into our deck a lot and if they get rid of their whole graveyard, there goes the whole thing. So plans offline. So I had to mention that at the start, and now that's out of the way, let's get into the cheese of this one. So we start off with our first escape creature, a Chainweb Arcaneo. And he's a perfect little one drop. He's a reach, one, two, block a spider, which is awesome. Um, but when he enters the battlefield, he will do damage to a fly equal to his strength, so one. So you can kill a healer's hawk or a pirate spirit early game. But he escapes for 5 mana, exile 4 other cards from your graveyard, and he escapes with 3 1-1 one, one counters on him. So he'll come down as a 4-5 and do 4 damage to a flyer, i.e. a Nightmare Shepherd or something like that. So early game removal, late game removal, and a 4-5 reach late game, I think that's pretty solid body. So he's a gem, and I would run 4 copies if I did have 4. I don't. <laughs> so our next escape is Kroxa. He comes down and uh, the opponent has to uh, discard a card. And if they discard a land, then they take three damage. So that's pretty solid. Um, and then his escape is two black, two red. Exile five other cards and then you get your ETB again and he sticks around. You don't have to sacrifice him when he escapes. And it goes the same for Uro. He's the same. When he enters the battlefield, you escape him. Um, you <laughs> sacrifice him. But he enters, you draw a card, gain three life, and put an extra land on the battlefield. So that's a nice little stay in the game all rounder. But the one-two punch that we have is Lazav. So the way he works is you can pay the mana cost of any creature in the graveyard, and he'll turn into that creature. And you can do that in their turn, which is kind of broken. But a little solid maneuver is on turn four, if you have a Lazav down, you can drop a Croxa, it's going to sacrifice itself, and then you can pay the two mana, turn it, turn Lazav into the Croxa and swing. So you get double trigger off the Croxa, and you can do the same with Uro. You can turn Lazav into Uro, swing in, draw a card, three life, put another land down. So that is pretty much a win con on its own, those three cards. And if you get that online early, you will feel the power of that combination. It's very solid, and the opponent kind of really has to just constantly answer you instead of getting their plan on. So that's a good good early game combo. Now I have a, f I might as well go through all the escape creatures first. So Woe Strider is the next one. He's a three drop. When he enters the battlefield you get a goat, a zero one goat token. Uh, sacrifice another creature, scry one. And that doesn't cost you anything, so that's a nice little cheese. He escapes for five, exile four other cards from your graveyard, and he escapes with two one one counters. So he will be a five four, which is a pretty solid body with another goat when he escapes. So that's pretty solid. Two bodies for three mana already. I like it. And then you get a scry. You're guaranteed to get extra value if you really need to, if they board wipe or whatever. But one thing to note with him is he can actually help you put things in the graveyard as well. Like the chain is where we bring him down, kill a 1-1 one, one flyer, and then you have enough mana to escape him. You can just woe stride to kill it and then get the scry and then escape him back in and then he's a bigger body. So you can help turn that, that on for you. Um, the next one is Phoenix of Ash. I would definitely run more copies of this if I had more. I only have the one. Flying Haste for a three drop. And he can you can pay three and buff him by two until end of turn. And his escape is four mana, two and two red. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. 
and he escapes with a 1-1 counter on it. So he becomes a 3-3 with haste, and that's an uh, amazing body in the air. So that's the uh, Phoenix of Ash. I'd definitely run more copies if you have them, but he's always sticking around. He's always just pinging them, and he's a good blocker as well, considering you can buff him and buff him. So that's pretty solid. Now, that's all of our escape creatures. The other cards that I had in here, I spread this over four colours because I really wanted to utilise certain aspects of other colours to glue this whole escape thing together. And the main ones is Binding of the Titans. This is a saga that will mill us. Each player puts the top three cards in, of their library into the graveyard. So we're going to mill them and mill ourselves. The difference is we're benefiting from the mill. The second one is exile two target cards from your opponent's uh, graveyard and you can gain a life if you exile creatures. So there's potential of exiling two creatures and gaining two life, which is kind of handy. And then return target creature or land from your graveyard to your hand. So I mainly use that to, to pick up a chain web arc near if I really need it, or a Lazav or a Harpy, which we'll get to. But I mainly just dig for a land. That's, that's almost like digging into your deck to find a land, I think. And you milling yourself, you kind of see a bunch of cards. You're guaranteed to see a land go in there. So he can just help you put a land in your hand and have an, an extra one for Uro. So that's a nice little combo. But the idea of the sagas is a, a small mana investment for three triggers. And when it goes to the graveyard, it acts as fuel for the escape. Now it's arguable that you could just put in a spell that you could cast and then it's in the graveyard for fuel, but I, I feel like having this do three like turns of work for us is kind of better. The other saga is Elspeth's Nightmare. First part is destroy target creature opponent controls with power two or less. That definitely comes into play. The second part of this saga is the main reason it's here. It's The opponent has to reveal their hand. We choose a non- creature non-land card from it, they discard that hand. So even if this can't target anything, if they only have you know bindings and counter spells, we get to see that. We get to know how to play around and what card, when to not escape. And that's the main thing. We don't want to escape exiling a bunch of cards from our graveyard just to have that card counted. So this is here to sort of see their hand and just prevent that from happening. And then the third phase is going to exile their graveyard. So let's just say they're running an Agent of Treachery deck and we've helped mill that into their graveyard. We can just get rid of it. And we can also get rid of their agent. So this can kind of handle a, a mirror match in that regard of a, a, dread, a dredge deck. But I do feel um, Elspeth's Nightmare has a solid place in this deck. And again, when, it, when it's done, it goes to the graveyard as fuel for our escape mechanic. So onto our Mind Rack Harpy. This is a little gem, and I'm actually going to do just a little sneaky, uh, little sneaky message for you. I'm going to do a solid build around a Harpy deck. That's my next deck I want to build, and an enchantment-based one. So moving on, <laughs> the Mind Rack Harpy is a gem. So a four drop three two doesn't sound like the best body, but at the beginning of your combat, you will. Each player puts the top three cards from their library into the graveyard. So this is every turn, every combat that this sticks around, we're milling them and us three, which is amazing considering we, got, we can exile theirs and we're setting ourselves up. And you drop this down with a Lazav on the, on the board and it's just filling the graveyard for him to be able to just turn into things. So the best thing about the whole Lazav with this escape is that you can... You know, rather than pay the escape, you can just have the creature back. And then when they get rid of Lazav, you can escape it then. Or sometimes you might have Lazav turn into, say, the Phoenix of Ash, and then escape the, the Phoenix of Ash itself. So we're having two of them on the board. So there's a few little tricks, and this just helps flood our graveyard with options. So that's a solid little thing. If you have two of these out, it's um, incredible. So as you may notice, that's the only two mill options we have. Everything else is not going to mill us. We, Like I said, we can Woe Strider ping things into the graveyard just to get the escape if we need it. But the Mine Rack Harpy and the Buying of the Titans are the only two ways to mill to the graveyard. I feel if we ran a, a solid mill deck to try and turn this on, we're just going to mill ourselves way too quick. We might as well just run a Jace mill deck. So having these do the mill only, I think keeps it a little bit more controlled. Um, Leyline. This is the bit I wanted to get to, because Flash, we get to 
escape our creatures with flash. So this can be a broken surprise for our opponent to deal with, where they, you know, see that we're just going land go with a ley line down. So they're waiting for any, a counter spell or waiting for us to just drop a creature to block. But when they see us escape at the end of their turn and have a Croxa or a Uro, and then we get to swing with that, it's just bonkers. I absolutely love Leyline in this deck. And from turn four, where we just land and go, we play the rest of the game in the end of their turn or during their attack phase. They may attack in, and we, we could potentially uh, escape in uh, Uro and block and get three life and a card draw, put a land down. So there's a, a solid way to sort of just keep them on their toes and they become quite conservative with their game plan once they see that happening. Um, so yeah, there, there's actually been a game where I played where I was versing flyers and it was this ley line that kept them from attacking in because they knew I was just going to keep bringing things back like the chainer's web at their turn and block. So they really sort of held off. So honourable mention for this. Eat to extinction, I only have two copies in here. Um, on the fence if I'd run more, maybe you could run three of this and two Elspeth's Nightmare. Um, but this is here to just deal with a Planeswalker if we really have to, or a, a creature that's just getting out of our out of hand, like a Niv-Mizzet or something. Um, or something we really need to exile. You don't really want to do it on a cat, but sometimes you will. And the other part of this is you may put the... Look at the top card of your library, you may put it into your graveyard. So that can help just put the right thing in the graveyard. If it's a land we don't need it, or it's a creature that we want to escape, it can help us. So that's here if, to do sort of two jobs in one. So that's pretty nice. The Moldavine of Reclama Reclamation. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to do that. Um, this is a five drop enchantment that, you know, I've seen it in a couple of decks and I feel like it's a bit of a slug. Five drop, tap down, do nothing, it kind of sucks. You have to sacrifice a creature, throw them under the bus to get any value from this. But it makes it a little bit sweeter when we flash it in having a ley line down. So at the end of their turn we drop a Moldavine Reclamation or during their turn and then we block and get a bunch of life. So the one thing you'll notice with this is whenever a creature dies, you gain one life and draw a card, so you play a Croxa, it's going to die straight away. You play a Uro, it's going to die straight away. It's going to give us another card draw for our Uro. It's going to give us a life as well for our Croxa. So that's pretty solid. The other thing too is our Lazav. If we have a Lazav down, we drop a second copy, and then we have to sacrifice one, which will give us a card draw and a life, and a um, a surveil as well so there's a couple of little shenanigans that, that can really pull off the woe strider that can really work solid with the moldavine so we sacrifice the goat as you may notice it's whenever a creature it doesn't say non-token so you sacrifice the goat you're going to get a card draw and a scry before the card draw so that's a beautiful combination um, and having this down with a woe strider if you throw anything under the bus, you're getting a scry, a card draw, and a life. So they start swinging in, we start blocking with creatures happily that die, we are gaining life, getting a lot of card advantage, and our creatures can all just come straight back. It's just insane. So this will give you quite a lot of card advantage, more than you would expect with, the, with this kind of mechanic. And it seems odd to be in here, I know, but you'll be pleasantly surprised once this goes down just how much it helps you fill your hand towards the end of the game and just get this whole thing online. So, yeah, I really like how this all comes together. The land has been quite clunky because it's a four-colour you could imagine. It's, you know, being quite clunky. I was going to do the whole lock, uh, um, cast enchantments from the graveyard and the... Um, eggs and stuff so I could make sure I had all four colors but just felt like I was janking around so I feel like running just all the plain lands and a couple of scry lands with three fabled passages is a working combination so far anyway the fabled passage uh, note it's going to sacrifice so you sacrifice this into the graveyard and then you can just get rid of it as escape fuel so that can really come into play and that's pretty much the deck. I think that's everything and how they all clink together. 
Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow. Hit me up in the comments if there's cards I'm not seeing or there's a combo that would work really good with this deck. And if you build it and you run it, tell me what you think of it because I'd love to hear back from you guys. And also, if there's a card or a deck that you want to see, I'm definitely up for the challenge. This one goes out to you, Kate. Thank you so much for the challenge and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into some games. All right, we'll keep this. Going with a scry. Okay. Oh, did want to get that in, but I think we should go with the Croxa first. Yeah, I guess we need the land. Let's set us up for that. Okay. Sure thing. Maybe we do want to get rid of that instead of Croxa right now. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like we're versing a pretty fast moving deck though, that could have been a mistake. I plan on killing that next turn. Depends if he puts down a Chandra's thing or not, because he is pinging himself as well, so... Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So he's doing it now. We're obviously not going to target that, he'll just sacrifice it. So now we get to look at his hand and if he drops something big next turn we can eat to extinction and we're good. Okay, sure. There we go, that's what we wanted to see. Um, I guess get rid of that. And I think we go this way. And we go dig up a red for Crox's escape. So we got two red. Oh, we still need another black though. Oh, I got that in hand. Okay. And we don't have any red. Good news. Okay, I'm going to go for a blue just to mix it up. Because, um, in case I get the ley line, I want the dual blue for that. Okay, so he's going for attacks. I want him to sacrifice this. So he is not. So we'll exile that. So he was going to spend two mana to ping me. Oh, one man, he was, he was going to shock me to brew that up. Yes, we will keep that. Cool. So he hasn't been moving as fast as he wants. So he's really trying to just do something with what he has. So there goes his graveyard. That's pretty nice. Um, this would be good to get rid of stuff out of his hand. He's got a shock for that. I think we go this way. To start getting options off the top of his deck. Good, 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 good. So we'll drop our Croxer. So he's going to have to get rid of one of those cards. And he's missing a land. He's been missing lands for a little while. Which one? Probably Shock. Yep. Sure. So he's ready. Oh no, we need another red. 
There's his fourth land. One damage. Then he's going to do three more damage to us. Yeah. Okay, we're definitely getting rid of him. Oh man, I pressed the wrong one. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's one life anyway. So now that he doesn't have that, I think we drop this guy. I mean, ley line would have been better there, but I just feel like we're getting a bit low. More cards into the graveyard. We're going to hopefully get a red back with this. We're going to get a Fabled Passage. There you go. So do you have removal for the Harpy? Because I kind of would refer you to kill that than do the damage to me. Yes. Okay, so that was his last card in hand. Down to 10. Okay. Sure. I think we get a Fabled Passage, because... Oh god, we don't have another red, what am I doing? Didn't even have a look. Such a clown. I am a clown, everybody. Um... Yes, another green. We only have one green, so... Um... I think I'm going to get this down for life gain. Seems weird, but just while he's got no cards in hand and only one damage on board, he has to top deck something real good here. Okay. So that's not too bad. Sure. Okay, so. We could go this and then we take one two three damage next turn or do we just go Lazav okay I'm gonna risk it this is a risky move but I just feel like we need to be set up we've got everything online now I'm still missing that red land for this which really sucks taking the three maybe another three damage here no Okay, so, I'm just going to pass. I'm just going to exile that before he can attack. Yes, we do want that. Pass to attackers. Now he might have removal for Lazav, but that's fine. Guess we're gonna keep it there. It is a pain land though. So now he's gonna sacrifice it, or he's got some damage to do to me. Okay. So he, it's better than going to my face, that's for sure. There's a life and a card draw. Sure. Ah, that's not what we wanted. Um, yeah, this is kind of dangerous right now. Okay, end turn. So we can do that and that this turn. So I'm going to go this first. Oh, I just, I've done that instead of the Croxer. Uh, so now we're going to go sacrifice this. Get a life. Card draw. Yeah, we don't need that. And then we're going to go like this. Do one damage to him. Pass to blockers. Block there. Now this is where this spider comes right into his value. 
That little one drop just done so much. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do this, get another life, another card draw. And yeah, we'll keep that. I mean, a removal piece would probably be better, now that I think of it. But we'll throw this down. We'll get, we'll get rid of him. Yes, there goes a Calamity. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. But just for the sake of it, I want to get rid of that Calamity. Just to show him. Yes, I'm taking them away from you. You don't get to have that. Crappy shenanigans. <laughs> it's an awesome combo, I know. Okay. Next to combat. What are we going to do here? I think that's it, isn't it? Just have to pass turn. So hopefully it sacrifices. Okay, so this is not fun. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep. So we'll get rid of one. And we got a solid blocker. One damage to him. And we'll sacrifice that guy, get a card draw and a life. Cool. Okay, so we've definitely got enough land now. Okay, buddy, you can have a go. Still taggers. He's just doing this to get the damage in. Yep. So he's still not strong enough to survive. So you're gonna sacrifice it and do one damage to me instead. Why is oops? What's oops about this? Is it oops for you? Sure. I prefer to take that than friggin' six or four or whatever it was. Okay, so we're gonna bring back a Lezav. Drop him. Just for the surveil at this point, yes, that's very nice. Next to combat, we'll go in for a big chunky swing. So the good news is we've got this guy ready to just remove any flyers. And turn, and this guy is already there to block. So we're at six life, but we can start gaining it back. Next turn we're dropping him and swinging with him, which is insane. Let's, oh man, I just milled it. My turn. Okay, so it doesn't really, oh, we do want to get life actually. What creatures do you have? Both of these shenanigans. Back up to eight. And then here comes the surprise, buddy. Three. We're going to turn him into a Udo. And then swing in. Another Lazav. Done. See what I mean? It just completely throws him off guard. We can just stick around. We just beat a Calamity deck with an escape deck. That's weird. So this looks good. We've got all of our colors. We're going to paint this in. 
And then we can crocs it as well. And no fly, so no need for that. I think we should crocs a while they've got a grip full of cards. Okay, so I guess next turn we can tap that in and go in with a Binding of Titans. I think that was a better move. Sure. Yeah, so I'm going to tap this in. Go in on a Binding. Like getting things out of his reach. Oh, we needed that. Needed that Elspeth nightmare. Okay, sure. So he's just going for his color match. Two damage here. Down to 18. Yeah. He doesn't have a buff. That's good. Okay, so... Yeah, we'll get rid of that. It doesn't really matter. Go up to 19. And... Oh, missing a green land. How is that? So if we had another green land, we could have killed him then, which would have been amazing. Okay, so that sucks. Yep, yeah, put him in the graveyard. Thank you. Ooh. I think we're gonna get Croxer back. Oh, I could delve deep here, which I think we should do. Yeah, so all of these. And we take out this guy. Now he's left with a 2-2 flyer. We've got a 4-5 reach blocker. Now a binding of light or something here. Okay. It's still a 4-4. Four, four. He just doesn't have reach. Okay. No, what is mate? So we'll take out that healer's hawk. We'll get a four swing in here. Are you going to take four or are you going to lose your flyer? Guess he doesn't want to lose his flyer. <laughs> so our Binding of Light is going to help us be able to do this. Wow, dude. That's kind of weird. Yeah, no worries. We'll gain a life draw a card. Okay, our turn. So we'll go this first, get rid of a card. And we'll draw a card and gain another life. Oh uh, yes, nice. Go down. Ooh, done. Just going to exile him though. I'm gonna hold off on that. And I'm gonna swing in. 
Oh, I can't swing in. I forgot about that. We need a woe strider for him. We do have a chain web in the graveyard. Sure. Okay. No, we won't block. We could block. Oh, I could have blocked him. That's what I should have done. That was my bad. That was a misplay. We turned him into him and blocked the healer's hawk. Surprised him. Alright, so we're going to go like this first. Then we're going to go two, three, and three. Yep, so this. Whoa, Strata. Welcome to the party, mate. Then we're going to go like this. So we're going to get card draw, land down, have a scry. Yeah, we'll keep Croxa. And we're going to life. And we'll make him get rid of that card. Beautiful. I missed my trigger with my Lazav, but I am going to do that sneaky little thing where I turn him into this guy and block. Sure. Oh, did I just skip past it? Yeah, I did. Double misplay. Whatever. So we should get some life back here. We know that we've killed a couple of these things, so... Okay, sure. Make a bunch of dudes. No worries. Okay, so one and two. There's two life. Let's see what we can get done here. Okay, so this is tricky. We're going to get rid of these. One Croxa. We'll get rid of both Croxes. We'll drop this clown. Okay. Ooh, can we do both? Three and two. No, we cannot. But what we're going to do is turn this guy into our roll go in for an attack what's this guy doing another three life back to 20 and then we'll put the land down So he's left with just lots of 1-1s one -ones and we're at 20. We've got a pretty solid board state here. What we're worried about is, say, a time wipe, but not really. These are all escape. He's will just die. And we'll get life for that, so... Okay. And then we go blockers. I think we get rid of his... No, we get rid of his... Uh, force him... Force him to draw a card here. Card draw, you will get. Okay, so our turn. Oh... I think we get back. <laughs> he can see what we have, man, jeez.
This sucks, but I'm keeping it. Tapping in the green. Oh, there's a. At least we got a creature before turn three. Yeah, okay, so nothing. Enter that tapped. And I'm going to put this guy down. Just as a little chump blocker. Good if he done the... He's going to do it? Okay, that sucks. Gruel is so heavy hitting. Oh, trample. Okay. So at least we got a good blocker for the Gruul Spellbreak or whatever the hell his name is. I actually haven't run. I've got one copy of this guy, Spellbreaker. And I just haven't run him. I haven't done any decks on him. I ignored him, even though I versed him a million times. I think I just didn't like it. I mean, it's a good card. It's a really good card. It's just, I was annoyed versing it, so I just didn't decide to build around it. I don't know. It's weird. Are you going to turn the land into a 4-4? No, he's not. What are you choosing here? 1-1 one, one counter. Master attackers. Master blockers. We'll have none of it. We'll get rid of his gruel spell breaker. Um, three, four. I guess it wouldn't be too bad to keep that. Okay. And end turn. So eat to extinction, unless he drops something huge, we go on for this guy. Yep. It would have been good to do that on his land if he turned it into a 4 4 land. At least this way we're only taking two damage unless he drops a two drop with haste. Okay, so that's not bad, but it's a bit slow at the moment. Yeah. I am going to keep it. I feel like next turn we drop that, take whatever he's going to do. But... Mm, it's, re it's really heavy because he's just going to make a land as a 4 whatever I do I need to have this down to stay in the game there's no just putting a chump blocker down now is going to do nothing I mean what could I have turned him into well, there's a 1 2 plus 1 2 3 okay, so this guy is going to come down with a 1 1 and haste no, he chose two counters. Two damage? Go on. Okay. Enter that tapped. A little lucky that turn. We go to Zav. We go like this. Last turn. And then hopefully he doesn't have an answer for Lazava. He just swings in. Although he swings that block, so it doesn't really matter. Taking five here. Hey, this is good news for us. The 
it fights, doesn't it? Nice. That was beautiful. No worries, mate. I'm just going to swing in with my my huge dude. Wow, I don't get... Oh, he got me down to 10 and then scoops because why? Why did he scoop? I just feel like they don't get to do what they want to do, they just quit. Instead of... Like, I was sticking around even though I was losing. Man, this is good. We've got our... Ley line. Okay. Well, we're going to do the same thing. I think we go for a blue. And we've got our turn two, turn three. Okay, cool. Blue it is. Okay, so... What are we facing down here? Black Devotion? Oh, gross. What are you getting rid of? Voice Strider, so he can't come back. Oh, interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay, so we need the, the green. So let's dump some crap in his graveyard now. There's some things you can't touch. Nice. We got rid of another one of those. Agonizing remorse and we're going to dump those two out of his graveyard and get to life. Sure. Sure thing. Okay, that's interesting. I'm expecting the cat to be a part of this equation. Okay, so we're gonna dump that guy and that guy, thank you very much. Yes, I'm going to exile your cats when you put them down. Okay, so I think we can try and dig for his cats here. Go this instead, just in case we're able to get one of these to happen. Plus we get to have a look at the top card. Do you want to land here? Thank you. Although I could have got a land back with that, but five land isn't bad. We do need a second red anyway, so we'll get that with the binding. Oh, shit. So does he have an answer? Or are you going to cast something? That's the question. Murderous Rider or murder? Here it comes. Are you kidding me? So now he takes both Lazars and exiles them. That's disgusting. Okay, so for that I am going to Binding of the Titans now. I'm going to start dumping shit in your graveyard. This guy is actually pissing me off. Oh, we don't have any basic red. I always forget that. Don't have double black either. So we'll get a black. Black and 
and turn. I really should have got a red there. I could have done the Phoenix of Ash next turn or Roxa like now. But whatever. We all misplay from time to time. Sure. We'll go down with this. Oh, past the blockers. Mm-hmm. Let's have a scry. What are we gonna find here? No. Okay. The thing that you wanted to take away so bad. I should have flashed it in, but whatever. So we're going to get our three damage in. Do you have anything in hand? No, you do not. So hopefully we can get like a Uro or a Crocs the next turn. I think that's going to get us some card draw. And triggers. A Croxer would be amazing. Dump a card, get a life and a card in our hand. Make him drop one of these. Two or less. So we don't have any more of them. So why? Maybe he has another creature here. He does. So we're going to take two damage. And no Kroxa. Start dumping some stuff, shall we? Okay. No attacks. At least next turn we can waste Strider. Which will give us a good blocker for this clown. And also a card draw when we sack the goat. We've got no cards in hand. He's only got one. We're getting rid of that out of his hat. Those two, definitely. Okay, so he's offering the exchange. Maybe, maybe it's a buff? I don't know, but we're going to get a life and a card draw here. Are we keeping our Woe Strider, are we? That's interesting. Very interesting turn. Why wouldn't he have swung with that? Trying to keep a blocker, maybe? But then you got him. I don't understand what his, what his process is. So, yes and yes. Taking them away, buddy. You shall not have them. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. He doesn't have any cards in hand. The big 4-4. Four, four. We go... No, we go this guy. 100% this guy. Okay, so your death touch dude is going to be no good here. What a solid blocker we have. Okay, and turn.
Now, I haven't been flashing many things in, I get it, but I have also been navigating around a lot of his plays here. Got one card. Um, so we'll return the Woe Strider. This is just for our dig, our card dig. Why didn't I do the Croxa? Because I want to escape Croxa. Just a scoop. Straight up scoop. It's pretty surprising this deck. 